My name is DJ Quarles. Uh, my fiance is Miranda. We found our way to Bethel going on a year. Growing up, my mother and grandmother, we, we stayed involved in the church. I mean, it was a, you go Sunday morning and then you go back to your normal life. You no, know, it was, they drug us to church as kids. You know, we went almost every Sunday, but it was never by choice as a child. Um, then growing up through college, when I got out on my own, there was about a two year span where I didn't go to church at all. And then a friend of mine, we started going never consistently. We would go once or twice a month though. And that was just going. I was just present. It was just to get the feeling, to be able to say, yeah, I went to church last Sunday. Miranda and I, when we got together, we again, there was a span where we didn't go to church very often. We got to a point where we said, you know, we want our children to be raised in the church. We need to get, change some things in our life, in our lives. So the next step is to find us a home church. So we bounced around for a little while, not going every Sunday. We would just go test something out, not even long enough to give it a chance, really. So the way that we found our way to Bethel was through a coworker. Brooke invited us probably for a month or two before we actually took her up on it. The day that we walked in the door, I mean, when you see Nicole's energy, how can you not want to be a part of that? And it just the feeling that we had that, that day we left and said, that's where we want to be. That's where we, that's where we need to be. And ever since we've been, ever since that first day, we've been coming consistently. And I had never had a church before that by my choice, I went to consistently until we started going to Bethel. Something that was monumental for me is not even half a year, a few months after we first came to Bethel, my mother passed away. And everyone, every, I mean, so many people reached out to me. I was really close to my mother. And then the day that we came back, I will never forget the message that Pastor Dalton delivered that day. And then afterwards, he was one of the first people to come directly to me and embrace me and hug me. And that's what's, what family's all about. I mean, when, when you need family the most, they're there for you. So it's like when we first came to Bethel, someone handed us a key that we had no idea what it was. And after a few weeks, that door that we had just walked through started to slowly close, slowly close, and then it finally shut. And once it shut, we knew what that key was for. And it was at that point that we realized, we walked up to that door, we put the key in, we turned the lock, because, and we threw that key away because we knew that we, this is where we wanted to be, this was home, and we would never have to leave again. Hey, hey, how that for a story to be inspired that you can find a place to belong. And guess what? You belong even when you're in your living room. So we're just glad that you've been here with us. And uh, Pastor Marin's getting ready to come and bring a word. And he prepared this word just like you were sitting here in the sanctuary. So I, I would buckle up and be ready to be encouraged, be ready to have your faith build up. You know, we've been in a series all about our 4B mission that we are a people who belong, believe, become, and build, and he's going to push into that. But guess what? That works in any time in history and anywhere you're at. And so we're just really excited about that. Before he comes, let me just tell you two things real quick. Number one, Easter is not that far away. And so it's like four weeks away. And so we want to encourage you, just be praying and praying and praying into that. Uh, we're praying that churches are going to be filled all across America um, in just a few weeks. And so be praying about that. And keep in mind, Pastor Mary and I addressed this on a Facebook Live earlier this week, but keep in mind that people are watching you right now like how you navigate this season. And so navigate it in faith, navigate it in love, navigate it in grace toward everybody you come in contact with. Uh, and that's going to increase the opportunity for us to be witness. The other thing I want to tell you is this week, everybody say this week, 
this week, like I can't hear you, but I'm sure you're saying it. We're going to be going live on Facebook a lot just because we know some of you are going to be in your homes a whole lot, and we want to bring faith and encouragement. So every day, Monday through Friday at noon, uh, we're going to be going live, Pastor Marion, Pastor Steph, myself, just to bring encouragement, to bring faith, uh, all that goodness. And then Monday night at 7 p.m., is it 7 p.m.? 7 p.m., Pastor Marion's going to lead in a special time of communion. You and your home, us, wherever we're at, but just a special time of communion. And, and you can use whatever you need to, some, some saltine crackers or some bread or, I don't know, get creative, some pretzels, some chips, whatever you need to do uh, to share in communion because it's all about what that represents uh, in our life as believers. So without further ado, I, I would like to introduce our pastor who's going to bring a word who has led with faith and courage and determination and... Uh, just to honor God as a man of God comes to bring the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Love you, buddy. You know, what a, <clears throat> what a time we live in that we can look at this time as something that, you know, to be in fear about or something to be excited about because we were made for such a time as this. And God created us in his image. God created us in his likeness. And there's not one thing we face that he hasn't given a revelation to break it through. The key is, do we get that revelation and do we apply it? So let's pray and then we'll get going today with today's message. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you for people who are walking in love and people who are walking in anger, people who are walking in joy, people who are walking in fear. I thank you, Father, for every person under the sound of my voice that you've marked us, that you've called us for such a time as this, not to fall behind, but to lead and to lead forward, to lead towards you, to make you a superstar, to make you shine as a star, the great North Star. We give you the praise as you release your anointing today to heal the sick, to save the lost, to set the captives free, and to encourage the saints to demonstrate your love and to draw all unbelievers to you. And we give you glory and we give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen. Praise God. You guys can comment back and forth. Well, one advantage to no one really being here except a few people is I get to control the temperature in the sanctuary. So I love that fact. I can just make it as cold as I want. Praise God. And a lot of the mamas said, grandmas just said, amen, pastor. Glad I'm not there right now. But, uh, you know, as I look this time, I have been in full-time ministry, paid ministry now about 30 years, pastored this church, 21 years. So I think I know a little bit about faith. I know a little bit about how God moves and what God's saying and what God wants to do and what God wants to accomplish. I don't always get it right, but I think I get it right most of the time. And what I want to say is, and I want to say this with love, guys, is as we have been building up this time, it's amazing how God has equipped Bethel over the last month just to handle the crisis in our nation, the crisis that's in our community. And that is simply when we disagree politically or religiously or uh, over anything, what are we to do? We are to uh, love unconditionally and to pray for unity. And I think if we apply that, even when we miss it, just repent and move forward, we'll be great influencers for God. My concern through this whole time is not the world, My concern is how do we look to the world? That when we as Christians in social media and and even in person begin to question one another's faith because we're having a service with people in it or not. Well, you know, what I got to say to that is, as a pastor, is it any difference not having service if there's eight inches of ice and snow on the road and we cancel? Is that not faith? Oh, but there's a pandemic that could make our children sick, make our grandmother sick, make our grandfather sick, maybe even unto death. But is it faith not to have church? That's the question. And some would say, well, maybe the pastors of the churches don't have faith. Well, we have faith, but it's a limited faith. I mean, you may have super faith that you just believe for everybody in your family and cousins and cats and dogs, and they never get a sniffle, never get a cold because you're such a woman or man of God. But me, I have faith for me, for my family, for this house, but I can't have faith for every visitor, every guest that comes in here if they can walk in their own healing. So then I have to make a decision. 
And I've made that decision, and I know it's a good decision and the right decision. And if you want to, you know, evaluate me on that and my faith, I guess you can. I think there's a few other things in my life you could evaluate concerning faith. You say, why did you say that? Because I want people to come into the context of revelation. What is revelation? It's the revealed Word of God. And the revelation, the revealed Word of God, what does it do when it happens in our life? We talked about it last week. It ordains an effect of change. It brings change into the position of your life. Whenever you get revelation, I see things differently now than I did five years ago, 15 or 20 or 30 years ago. Why? Because I'm growing in Christ. I'm understanding the world more. I'm understanding the kingdom of God more. I'm understanding my role more. I don't live out of what people think as much as I used to. I still do occasionally, but not as much. And what I want you to realize is, as we are in this series coming all the way into Easter, talking about why we exist. And I think this is such a great time in which we live. It's a perilous time. You know, as a pastor, I thought I was facing a lot of stuff five years ago in our world, in our nation, in church, and all that, or 10, or 15, or 20. But in the last year or two, it's amazing the things in the last couple years, and even in recent months, we've had to face as pastors, how we've had to guide, how we've had to steer as spiritual leaders. And what I want you to realize is it's not like it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. We have to be up to date in our faith, up to date in revelation, hearing the voice of God and operating in context to the revelation he's ordained us to walk in and to be who he assigned us to be. Now, here's the ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is not to impress you with my faith. My ultimate goal is to impress you with my testimony that the reason I exist is to influence you to Christ. Anything other than that is not faith anyway. So as we talk about why we're here, you know, Bethel, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary this past year. And during that last month, of, during November when that happened, remember the great word that come forth that we were moving into Bethel 2.0. Bethel 2.0. In other words, everything that happened in the first 20 years was under Bethel 1.0, but we're moving into a new realm, a whole new level. And isn't it interesting, man, who ever planned any of this? Well, people didn't know 9-11 was going to happen, right? People didn't know that lots of big events were going to happen and certainly didn't expect this pandemic. And I'm not in fear, and I realize that 95% of the people won't even be affected in any way. But it's also up to us to understand our influence in our city, our state, our nation, and how we can be a light to bring people to Christ and be confident in the decisions we make and in who we are. So as we are taking a quantum leap of faith, what, through clarity, through growth, and through vitality, through life itself, that's moving us into Bethel 2.0. And whenever you tie into, you know, what we do and how we do it, that's key. But the thing that trumps all that is why we do it. Anyone who operates and can answer the question why will lead to people who know who, who know how and what to do. But there always has to be someone or a group of people that know the why. We as the church, the body of Christ, whether we're a parishioner, you know, an usher, a children's minister, a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, whoever we are in the church as believers We need to realize that our number one goal is what? To always influence people to come to Christ. That's why we exist. Now, we've come up with four key statements that explain even more in depth why we exist. We call it our 4Bs mission, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But before we do, remember our scripture for this year, Ephesians 3, verses 20 through 21. It says, in him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what? All. Not some, not a little, but all what? That we ask or think. Now remember, I said this last week, and I think it really pertains even more this week. God was preparing us. Isn't it funny he didn't say it, it is what? Exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or ask. Because a lot of times, you know, your mind will mess you up. You got to speak out of your spirit. You got to speak from your revelation and your understanding of Christ and who He is and understanding of the Word of God itself versus speaking from your feelings, your emotions, your circumstances. You see, revelation means 
I will speak what? I will ask, then I'll think. Man, I just can't get off that. I will ask, then I will think. What's that mean? In other words, i got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, what will be added unto me? Not just material things, not just physical healing things, but wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You and I only know what we know, nothing more, nothing less. You and I only understand, have an understanding of what we understand, nothing more, nothing less. And the key is, how do I know properly what to think if I'm not properly asking the one who knows all things what I should think? You know, he said, uh, before you can get the splinter out of the one guy's eye, get the two before out of your eye. He said, adultery is, a, you say it's a physical thing. He said, here's what I tell you. You committed adultery before you even committed a physical act by your eyes and by your mind and by your imagination. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. As Myself, I, I, I have a pretty high uh, idea of how I love myself. I, I, I love myself in a lot of ways like you do yourself. And I don't always practice that, but I'm trying to learn and grow in it. You know, with Paul, what he say? He said, Paul said that we are what to love as Christ loved. Man, that's strong, isn't it? Christ loved to the point of forgiving what? He told one guy, not just seven times, he said, forgive him 70 times. They said, well, what do you do whenever someone takes your coat? He said, give him your other coat. Well, what do you do when they slap you on your cheek? Turn and give him your other cheek. Wow. Love as Christ loved. So if we want to supernaturally advance, have quantum leap, supernatural advance in any area of our life, we must do what? Seek first the kingdom of God, and we will never know or understand or do or accomplish or achieve anything above the revelation that we currently have. So now to him who is what? Able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. Too many people want to tell you what they think by where they're at, not by who they ask. Let me say that again. Too many people want to share what they think from where they're at versus whom they ask. According to what? The power, dunamis power, what? Working in us. In other words, the answer is in you if the Holy Spirit's in you, but you got to ask so you know what to think, and then you'll know what to say. Verse 21, to him be what? Glory. That word glory means make visible, manifested presence. It means to light him up. To him be lit up. Where? In the church. See, the church is not this building. You're the church. I'm the church. Now, the Bible says, fail not to assemble yourselves together. But, you know, the cool thing is, I don't prefer this way, but at least we are assembled together right now, wherever you are. And we're under one word, under one Christ, hearing one voice. We're hearing one spirit, right? One truth, one revelation. By what? Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. So we see Jesus is the one that's able to make you able to ask. Do you know it, it takes a lot of humility to ask before you think? Because there's times, man, I, I, one of my difficult times, if I don't kind of do my thing where I have to change, you know, begin to give gratitude before I go to bed and slow myself down and my mind down. My mind's racing, man. I, I'm up. I'm just trying to think, just tossing and turning. But if I will forget that and just start asking and thanking and asking and thanking, all of a sudden I just begin to ask and give gratitude. And before long, my thinking comes to peace and I can rest and go to sleep. So Christ is the one doing his thing, his power through us. And what's he doing? He's making a difference. The reason you and I exist is to make a difference. Not a difference for us or another notch in our spiritual belt or our financial belt or our career belt or our great family model belt, but we're here to make a difference in someone's life, not in the natural, but eternally. 
So anything going on in this natural world never trumps what's going on in the supernatural world. Anything in the seen world never supersedes what's going on in the unseen world. Because everyone and everything that exists came from the unseen world, the unseen realm. God is spirit. You couldn't see him, but he is. And he spoke. And from his words, what? Things came into existence and were created. So it would be wisdom on your part and my part to always seek first the kingdom and ask God for ourselves. Not just... Don't just go around quoting what Dalton says. That's, that's the most ignorant thing I've ever seen people do. Well, that's what so-and-so, you got your favorite YouTube, TV, or Sunday morning preacher at your church, and all of a sudden they're God. I'm not God. Check me out. I could be wrong. I know it's rare, but I, no, I'm just kidding. We could all be wrong. You still, even if I believe it and you just quote it, doesn't mean you believe it. You got to get it for yourself. So, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us God's plan. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. Not just to be successful in the eyes of the world where people know your name, you got money in the bank, you got prestige, position, entitlement, and all that. No, he wants you to enjoy, to be at peace, to celebrate the success he's given you. It says, I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. He is that, he's in the hope business, man. He wants to give us hope so we can enjoy the success he's given us on this planet. So we'll be talking about why we exist all the way through Easter. And the reason we exist, what, is to be difference makers. And the four B's gives you a language so you can understand what being a difference maker is and what the culture of Bethel is. What are they? Belong. The first one is belong. What is that? You are loved just as you are. Wow, doesn't that kind of go with, even if we have disagreements and we don't agree, I love you unconditionally and do what? And I pray for unity. You know, you you can't stay mad at someone very long if you're praying for unity and if you're praying to help you love them more and to forgive them. It'll change everything in your life. We believe what in Jesus And his word, let Jesus be true and every man be a liar. We believe in Jesus and his word. We become what? We become what? Transformed Christ followers. To be totally transformed in his image, in his likeness. Be you no longer conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind through the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What's his will? That you have success and enjoy it. What's his will? You be a difference maker. What's his will? That you demonstrate his person and his love and his peace and his power and his faith so that others can come to Christ. We're here to stay in unity to draw all people to Christ. See, a lot of people mistake unity for agreement. And they think, well, if you're just in unity with someone, you believe what they believe. No, that just means you believe what Christ believed. (laughs) Well, you know, I stand for this. Well, you may be standing alone. You want to stand where Christ stands. And you want to be, remember he said, render to Caesar's what's Caesar. I don't have time to argue over, you know, what the law of the land and all that is to an extent. I mean, yeah, I pray for things and certain things we stand for, of course. But ultimately, it's in God's hands. I do what I can do, and then I trust God, and I believe, and I speak, and I vote, and I do the things I need to do. But ultimately, even if I disagree with someone, God can take any king and take his heart and put it in his hand, and the guy could never serve God. But he can take his, and we've seen it all throughout the the Bible. So we're on what? To build. What's build? Make a difference. Make a difference wherever you are. Make a difference in your neighborhood, in your home, in your city, in your state, in your nation. And so my prayer is by the end of this that this why we exist is burning in your spirit. It's burning in your heart. The four B's of Beth are uniquely why we exist and who we are. We see it through stories just like DJ's. He and Miranda and their story of how DJ just, you saw the video of how he shared with you how he feels like he belongs. You see, belong always comes before believe. And I'll get into that In just a moment. It's people, when people respond uh, to the altar call, give their life to Christ. It's when people respond to Miss Kathy's ministry and 
We get to feed them and love them, and some of them are led to Christ. It's whenever we grow together in edge groups or connect groups, what is that? That's where we're connecting and becoming fully devoted Christ, transformed Christ followers. It's about building, building through different means of discipleship and outreach here at the church. Not just building Bethel, but building God's kingdom. So now I want to get into the four B's in more detail. This is kind of an overview again today, and we'll dive in deeper next week. And I want you to realize that we are called to make a difference. So when we're living the 4B mission, while we exist, we're called to make a difference, not just now, but what for eternity. Jesus said this in Luke 24, verse 32, they ask each other, why not our hearts? Why not our hearts? Why not our hearts burning? Why is our hearts burning within us? while he talked with us on the road and opened the Scripture to us. Why was our hearts burning? See, I, I want to be the one that when people speak to me and they're, they're far from Christ, I want their hearts to burn and want more of Jesus and to want Jesus. And that's my prayer for us over the coming weeks as we come into Easter and we begin to invite friends and acquaintances and people we meet and know to come, that we can all come into agreement together for their hearts to burn like they were with Jesus. Amen? So as we look at this, let's start first with belong. Everybody say belong. Let me have a little drink here. Everybody say belong. And as we say that, let me fix my little thing here. And as we say that, and you guys begin to comment in the section there, at Bethel, what you are loved just as you are. Why? Because Jesus knew to whom he belonged, shouldn't you and I know to whom we belong. He lived a full life of demonstrating loving people just as they are. Other people ran from the demon at Gadara, the demoniac at Gadara, but he delivered them. Other people ran from the woman that, that was caught in adultery, but they brought him her to him. And then he said, who has not cast the first stone? Who has not sinned cast the first stone? He put her adultery in a place where, yeah, and he told her, that's wrong, sin no more. But he also loved her just as she was. Just like the woman at the well, he made her feel like she belonged. Even when he said, yeah, I know who you are. You don't have a husband. You've had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. And she went in and brought the whole city of Samaria, and they were saved in a day just because Jesus loved them where they were. So we got to understand that belonging, and this is something we wrestled with whenever we changed our whole mission statement, and we didn't change it. We just discovered a language for who we are about 10 years ago, and there was a big debate with some of the leaders when we were talking about it like, well, shouldn't believe become be before belong? And I'm like, I don't have peace about it. I got to pray. And I guess three months went by, and I finally put my foot down and said, no, belong is first, and here's why. Who cares what you, who wants to belong to any organization you have if they got to believe everything you believe and do things just like you and, and all that? No, people want to belong to something when they feel valued. They want to belong to something, even if they know, obviously they're coming to you, they want something more than they have. But they also need to understand their love just as they are. It's not the kingdom of haves and have-nots. It's the kingdoms of, kingdom of sons and daughters. And so as we look at this, God, God loved people, what? Before we were saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that through him the world might believe and not perish. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates, look at this now, his own, O-W-E, ownership of love toward us. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, it's one thing to think, well, we did come to Christ, that's cool, but what about all the people who don't come to Christ? You see, God, I think sometimes as a church, we feel like he just died for us. He died for everyone. He died for Robbers, bankers, murderers, everyone. And any of us are that except for the grace of God. 
No, he, he didn't just die for you and me and Bethel and the Methodist Church, Baptist Church, Pentecostal Church, Word of Faith Church. No, charismatic. No, he died for everyone walking the streets today. People hung over this morning. People who are miserable because of whatever they did all night long and they hate themselves for it. He loves us, them, as just as much as he does you and just as much as he does me. Jesus paid the price for every breathing being on this planet. No matter where you come from or where you've been, you get a fresh start with Jesus. And that's why we exist as a church. Yes, we want people to believe like us. Yes, we, want, we believe we have some strong beliefs. But until we love you and accept you, will you even listen to what we have to say? I think Belong I jotted something down. I'm going to read it to you. I think this could really help you understand what Belong is today in the society in which we live. Belong. You belong. You are loved just as you are if you are in a church or online today. You're loved just as you are if you're panicking or you're playing it down. You're loved just as you are if you're hoarding to, or, or making memes. If you're making crazy political posts or using religion to create fear. You're loved if you're social distancing or gathering in crowds. You're loved if you're, you, you are elderly or if you are young. You are loved if you are Asian or Kentuckian. You are loved if you are a Democrat, Republican, or an Independent. You are loved. That's why belonging comes first, and it worked for Jesus, and I think it'll work for Bethel. Can I get an amen from anybody out there? Amen? amen. I got, yeah, I got a couple in here. Praise God. But I believe you are too. And, and that's what you realize. In, in this time, guys, Listen, this is what the Holy Spirit really convicted me about when I was jotting this down this morning, is this, is we focus so much on our, why we exist in the church. We belong, right? We belong in the church. So I'm going to love everybody in the church and accept them just as they are, even if they have a different lifestyle and I don't believe, but boy, at work do I love everybody just as they are. At school, in my neighborhood. On television, people I see, people I come into contact with in crowd, do I love them just as they are? So why we exist is not just for the four walls of some building on a property. Why we exist is our culture. Why we exist is our DNA. It's the blood that runs through us. It's, it's our, our thumbprint, our fingerprint. It's, it's who we are. It's why we put on this planet. So don't just get in your mind, well, I mean, I, I love everybody in my church, and you're blasting everybody else on social media. Why, or you're running your mouth at work and killing your influence. And then you pray, oh, Lord, use me. I want to be a light. You're a light, but for the wrong God. We need to humble ourselves. We need to repent. We need to get over our opinion because everyone has one. <laughs> anyway. Let God be true and every person be a liar. Oh, this is a nice, sweet message. Maybe it's good I don't have people here. I won't get attacked. Amen. Believe. Believe in Jesus and his word. They're here. Amen. Believe in Jesus and his word. Now, isn't it interesting that we put the word first? Remember, we ask, then we think. That's putting the word first, right? We ask. Him, we seek His Word, then we let that transform our mind, then we speak, then we take action. John 20 verse 31 says, but these scriptures are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, not just a Christ, the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. You might have a life, and you might think it's eternal life. It's eternal somewhere. But I think we need to really open our hearts and minds to see which God we really serve. Whose team are you really on? There's a lot of things we can believe in. But if we don't believe from the right foundation, we can get to heaven. But, boy, we can keep a lot of people out of heaven. I don't want to get to heaven and the Lord says, come in, Dalton. i got to accept you. According, I'm not a liar. You, you, you believe in me, but... Boy, there's a lot more people not coming to heaven because you existed than because you existed. Is you being right more valuable than someone else coming to heaven? Hmm. 
Is your opinion really that valuable anyway? I know mine's not. Jesus, what is the Christ? That's why we believe. That's who we believe in. What? Not according to how I feel. Not according to my favorite preacher. Not according to my mentor. Not according to my personal little devotion that I get alone and I hear God. You got to take all that into evidence. But number one, you go back and let the word be true and everyone else be a liar, including your own mind. Remember, I said it last week, and I love, you know, Prophet Trout talked this years ago here, that Satan has a scheme for every one of us. It's funny that I see people who are really judgmental hate judgmental people because they were probably raised in a judgmental household. And they're not judgmental about certain things, but certain things they are judgmental about. Or people that hate people that get angry, but they're the ones that get angry over things that they shouldn't get angry about. Or people that... That, that have, you know, uh, uh, sex issues or money issues or truth issues. And they hate that, but sometimes they fall, find themselves falling into that. You see, what, I got, what you got to realize, Satan has a scheme for every one of us, guys. And, and what we need to do is make sure that we know that we belong and we're loved, accepted by God just as we are. But then let's get into his word and see what his word wants us to think so we know what to say. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew sin, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made Christ to be sin. So the sin that you've committed today or this week, Christ was already made into it, and we need to give, we need to ask for repentance and give it away so that we don't have to walk in it. The believe component of our mission statement is focused on getting us to believe what the Word of God has to say. Well, let me put this in, read another little thing for you I jotted down this morning, how believing relates to where we live today. Everybody goes, oh no, I don't know if I want to hear this, Pastor. We believe in Jesus and His Word. We are living in uncertain times and everyone has an opinion about what to believe and what is truth. If you're grasping for something solid to hang on to, Jesus and his word is the only unshakable truth in this world. Perhaps for some, the pan, this pandemic has made you face the reality that you have elevated some other things above your faith in Jesus. Or perhaps for others, you need to choose faith in Jesus for the first time today. And for some Christians, you might need to focus on the unity we can have with other believers during this time by focusing on what we agree about rather than what we disagree about. I wonder when an unbeliever that are in our friend group see us get in some spiritual debate, fighting back and forth or political debate or church debate, what they really think about us and what they think about God. It's really interesting. It's not just what we believe and who we believe in. It's how we share that. And your life is the greatest belief message you can ever share with anyone. Become. Let's hit this. I want to get the last two in really quick here. Become. Be what? Be a transformed Christ follower. Jesus took, did what? He took people. He shook people out of status quo. The status quo lifestyle and got them, in, invited them on a journey with him so that they could be not just Christ's followers, but do the things that he has done and even greater things he said. We think of his disciples as he chose the 12 just ordinary men, fishermen, and so on, and uh, all different walks of life over the course of that three-year period. And each one of them discovered their calling, and each one of them had to go through a time of transformation. But what I want you to realize is, listen to this, get this, becoming isn't about information. It's about transformation. Because people don't want to know what you know till they know how much you care. And that's the key. We got to come to a place where people understand and know that we love them just 
as they are. It's about experiencing a transformation and being related into this world with an undeniable message that will change you and change those you influence. A scripture you've heard me say around here for 20 years now, going on 21 years, 2 Timothy 1.9, whom he has saved and called, what? He saved us and called us with what? A holy calling. Hegios, that means separated from the world's use for God's use. Separated from an unsanctified use for a godly use. He has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to what his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before time began. Your purpose is in Christ. Your grace is in Christ. It was already established, and you can, you can try to manipulate it and try to make it fit your life and try to make it fit your belief system but you, and be sincere. The only problem is you're sincerely wrong. <laughs> See, it's the inward transformation that begins at salvation. It's the outward expression of God's purpose, which is our calling and how we influence others with that transformation. So becoming, who I become is not based on my works. Who I become is is all about releasing the power that's in me through the Son of God, through the Spirit of God. And it all begins with loving people just as they are, Believe it in Jesus and his word. Becoming a transformed Christ follower to do his perfect will and to make a difference. So before we, the world began, we see that God already set up the purpose and the plan of how he wanted to operate. Let me go on with this. Uh, let me read this to you. Become as it relates to the world we live in today. Look at your neighbor and say, oh me, oh my. So be a, to, today, if we look into world's terms, to be a transformed Christ follower right now, right now we've never had a greater opportunity in history to become a transformed Christ follower. It's in the storm that God does his greatest work of refining us and shaping us, teaching us character and faith and faith-shaped lessons like choosing faith over fear, trusting when we don't have the answers, loving others when it's hard or when we disagree, honoring leadership or authority when we don't like their decisions, humbling ourselves to serve. If we can become more like Jesus during a pandemic, the world would know us by our love and the fact that we have been with Jesus. Wow. Man, guys, when we look at this, Why we exist is so significant. It's our culture. It's our DNA. If you want to know what I believe, this is what, I'm just laying it out. This is what I believe. And the majority of the people that attend Bethel, this is what you believe and they believe. And so anything other than that is not part of our DNA. Anything other than that is not part of our culture. Let me wrap it up with this one because I told you I wanted to stay within about 30 minutes. And probably the most important one really is build. What is it? Build. To make a difference. You, are, you exist to make a difference. You don't exist to make a difference in the sporting world. You don't exist to make a difference in owning a business or, or making a difference in a corporation or an educational system or even church hierarchy and religion and positions and status quos and that. No, you exist to make a difference, to make an eternal difference in someone's life, to bring people that are far from Christ to let them know there's hope. You might be the one that just plants the seed. You might be the one that waters the seed. You might be the one that harvests them. Whatever it is, just do your part. Be the one that influences others to make an eternal difference in their lives. That's the purpose. That's the calling that you and I have on our life. After Jesus had risen from the dead, he gathered a group together and he said this in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. He said, therefore go, what the great co-mission, that means you're doing it together, Therefore, go and make disciples of what? All nations, ethnos, people groups. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. Well, you know, when they baptized people in biblical times, 
You know, they would say, he's baptized unto Apollos. He's baptized unto Paul. He's baptized, he's baptized unto John. That meant that that was your rabbi. So you were immersed and you came up and you sat under that rabbi and their teaching was your truth. But as greater revelation come and Paul laid it out to where we understand it here today. And when we really evaluate the, Jesus, the words of Jesus, he said we're to be baptized through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He and they are our ultimate teachers. They are ultimate truth. And if you're going to get into Daltonism and make my words greater than Jesus, you're wrong. And I'm wrong. If you're going to get into any mentor or teacher or friend and take their words over Jesus, you're sincerely wrong. I want you to understand there is one truth. There is one word. There is one spirit. There is one Christ. And we need to live a culture like that and create a culture like that and live by the 4B mission that's going to make an eternal existence. And that's why you and I exist. But here's the key. There's more people in the world that haven't come to him than that have come to him. There's more people in the world that don't know why they exist than that do know why they exist. But what breaks my heart, there's more people in the body of Christ that don't understand why they exist, even though they're born again. I can only imagine what God is thinking. I can only imagine when he looks down on us, including me, and just could see easily how we missed the mark, but he graces us. And he loves us, and he leads us, and he teaches us, and he gives us opportunities. I think we could, well, let me read the words from Paul. In Acts 20, verse 24, he said, But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And that's it. Well, what is the gospel? It's the grace of God. It is Jesus. Grace came. The law was given, Romans 5 said, but grace came. Who is grace? It's not a what. It's Jesus. Jesus was God with skin on. If you want to know what God loves, read the words that read in your Bible. You want to know what God hates? Read the words written and read in your Bible. Jesus never said he hated one person. Every person he tried to influence to come to him. Let me relate this to today, what I believe being a difference maker is, and then we'll pray. To be a difference maker in the world today, to make a difference, make a difference for Christ where you are. Now, that's not just where you are physically, in a church, in your neighborhood, in your home, at work. Make a difference where you are in your mindset right now. Don't make excuses that that's just the way you are. If it is, change it. Don't make excuses of I got to be right or other people won't know what the truth is. Listen, Jack, you're not the truth. Because you can't set me free and I can't set you free. The spirit in us can set each other free. So, so your opinion really doesn't matter that much. Neither does mine. As I've gotten older, I've learned that. I used to think, boy, my opinion mattered so much, and I realized it really doesn't. I could have people sit under my ministry 10 years and play cow. Because I'm, and Christ had half, two-thirds of the church split when he rose in the book of Acts, remember? That's why there was only 120 that went up to the upper room. But there was a group that wanted the truth. There was a group that wanted to make an eternal difference. There was a troop that sacrificed, humbled themselves, repented, were embarrassed for betraying Christ, and just humbled themselves. If we want to make a difference, church, we got to humble ourselves. That doesn't mean be weak. It takes more strength to humble ourselves than it does to just spout off. We need to love our government. We need to love our school systems. We need to love our authorities. We need to love other churches. We need to love the unsaved, the saved. We need to love the bartenders, the bar owners. We need to love everyone from every walk of life. That's where Jesus would be today. He would be sitting in four walls anyway. You just come in here for me to fire you up so you can go make a difference where you are. So making a difference where you are is not just in your position or where you're at. It's in your mind. It's in your heart. Remember, we're supposed to ask then think. So make a difference where you are. 
at work or home, in class or on the playground, in good times or in bad times, in easy times or in tough times, in church or at the mall, wherever you are, make a difference. I want to ask you, church, where are you at today? You know, this is going to be shown two more times today. You need to be sharing this all over your social media. You need to be bringing people to this word today so they can hear this word and realize that there is a church that believes that wherever anyone is in their life, where they've been messed up and hurt by church or never came to God or don't even believe in God, that they're loved and that they're welcome to come because we want to be here for them and let them feel the love of Christ so they could become one who knows Christ for themselves. I want to just pray for peace over your life, break fear. I know, man, there's nothing else on. There's no sports or anything. So the only thing you can really watch is news or I guess you watch Netflix and stuff like that. But I want to ask you, what are you, what are you filling your mind with? Right now is a great time. We're going to have communion tomorrow night at noon every day this week. We're going to have a little short nugget word and time of fellowship with you at noon all Monday through Friday. But Monday night, we're going to have communion. And just get your family wherever you are and, and share that with me. i got a word for you on that. But I believe it's going to stir you up. We just need to stay connected. We need to stay together. Because greater is he who is what in us, not just me, us, than he who is in the world. So I pray for you, whether you're dealing with something physical or spiritual or you're far from Christ. Let me, let me ask you this, first of all. If you're far from Christ or if you die today and you don't know if you'd go to heaven, I want you to just click on her and say, that's me. I, wanna, I want you to pray for me, Pastor. I want to pray right now. So right now on social media, you're there, you're saying, I need Jesus. I want to come to Christ today. Maybe you what we would say backslider. Maybe you've never known Christ, but you want your own personal relationship. If that's with you, just... I don't know, raise your hand or however you do it. I want to pray with you. And in about 10 seconds, I'm going to pray for all those that want to come to Christ right now. And I want all you believers to believe with me. Then after that, we'll pray for everyone else. Because that's the most important prayer. Five seconds, we're going to pray. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready to meet Jesus right now? Three, two, one. My friend, you can't afford not to meet Jesus because we don't even know, let alone act. We don't even know what to think or say truly until we get in an intimate relationship. So all the believers pray this with me and all of you that want to come to Christ and rededicate your life, pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now. I ask you, forgive me of my sin. I believe, Jesus, you rose from the dead. And that your blood washes away my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Jesus, be the Lord of my heart and my life. Be my Savior. I accept your love and your grace now. And your atonement. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, man. That, that's it. It could be more simpler than that. It could be, Jesus... I receive you as Lord and Savior. And just, just to really mean it, when you feel, you'll know, you'll know. People make it so religious. So thankful. If you give your life to Christ, let us know. We want someone to connect with you. We want to communicate with you and share with you. Let me pray now for you to just stir up your faith and your confidence, heal your bodies and so forth. Father, I just thank you right now that you said this year of clarity, growth, and vitality be a year of prosperity success, healing, deliverance, growing in faith, growing in influence, growing in relationships. So anything that's robbing us from clarity, growth, and vitality, anything that's robbing us from at least double, we bind it in Jesus' name. We speak healing over our body, over our minds. We speak forgiveness in our hearts, Lord. That God, we be the difference makers you assigned us to be. That someone comes to you because we exist and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give God a big shout of praise. I sure do love you. Talk to you soon. Hey, Bethel family. 
So just a couple things real quick before we uh, end our live broadcast. Um, just reminding you that every day this week at noon, uh, one of us is going to be on there, Pastor Steph, Pastor Mary, myself, just bringing some encouragement and bringing life and bringing faith. And so we invite you to come out and be a part of that Facebook Live uh, on every day at noon. And then tomorrow night at 7 p.m., Pastor Marion is going to lead in uh, just some time to share communion right where you're at in your home, your office, wherever you're at. And uh, so we hope you be a part of that. And then don't forget, be praying about Easter because it is not that far away. So let's right now just begin to shine light so that we create even more opportunities for us to show people love, invite them into an Easter service, or to show them the love of Christ. So we're so glad you joined us today. There was a lot of you. I was on the front row uh, checking in and commenting and connecting with so many of you. So, hey, take this opportunity. Reach out to people. Show them love. Give them a call. Check in on your friends and your families. Uh, Buy some gift cards online for some local businesses um, because businesses are going to be feeling this. So be a difference maker. We love you. We'll see you soon.